Good morning, eighth graders. Um, today, I um, would like to talk a little bit about uh, further discussion on your PSSA um, tests that you will be taking in May. Um, I went through, on the last session, I went through all of the type of questions, the multiple choice questions, various types of what we call the extended question, and also the TDA. So what we have when we have a TDA, um, we are doing a much longer writing sample. So um, without further ado, we're going to look at the reading today and see what you come up against when you are looking at various um, uh, tests and what, what you have. So for example, you're going to get passages. Some of those passages are going to be lengthy. Uh, this particular passage called Swimming with Gentle Giants by Rachel Cartwright um, is going to preface letting you know that there are so many questions that are involved with this piece. And then there is also going to give you some background on the author. So you have Rachel Cartwright, who teaches biology at California State University. The Channel Islands has studied trends in habitat use and hump and humpback whale mother calf pairs in the Hawaiian waters. So this piece is going to be um, uh, nonfiction, and you are going to have to peruse and look through the piece. A lot of times these pieces are difficult to read online. However, um, the length that you see, it's two and a half pages long, is typical. Now, when we're taking a look at the multiple choice questions, they're going to immediately begin to ask you things about the passage. So that is why it's important that as arduous as it would be to read the piece, you can skim it, but I would not recommend that. You have plenty of time to do modules, so you should take the time to read through. So for many field biologists, there may be moments when you consider the focus of your lifelong work and wonder, how did I end up here? Working with humpback whales in the warm tropical waters of Hawaii, I have that moment at the start of each field season. I grew up in the north of England where, like most youngsters, my experience of the ocean was limited to my year, yearling yearly bone-chilling knee-deep paddle in the murky gray waters of Blackpool, a well-known northern seaside resort. And around age 10, I managed the required 25 yards across a fidget swimming pool. With that, I figured I had all the aquatic skills I would ever need later in life. <laughs> but then fast forward more than 20 years, and here I sit poised at the side of a 20-foot long research boat. I've traded the gray North Atlantic waters for the azure blues of the Pacific and temperate for tropical climb, climb that should be climates. But this water has no reassuring bottom close to my feet, for instead I'm looking down into 200 feet of water and resting just below me is a 45-foot behemoth, a female humpback whale. From below her massive girth is a tiny calf that peeks out. New humpback moms rarely rest with such young calves in tow. So my teammate, John Cessary, and I know that in a moment not to be missed, we grab snorkels, masks, and cameras and slip gently into the water. Now, I'm not going to read a whole lot more, but here's the deal. When you're looking at a lot of these, they try to be interesting. Um, you have to kind of read them to yourself with a little bit of interest so that you're not bored half out of your wits as you're trying to understand what you're going to be answering questions on. So the first question that I'm asked, it says, but this water had no reassuring bottom close to my feet. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've walked into a pond or if you've walked into um, a body of water, even a pool, and you can't put your feet down, you have to then learn how to be buoyant enough to hold yourself up on top of the water surface. So swimming, floating of something. So why does the author include this sentence in the passage? <clears throat> well, she could be illustrating how the ocean waters are more dangerous in the summer than they are in the winter, but we aren't getting that. So that's a no. And she is comparing her current experience in the ocean with her experience in a pool as a youth. That is pretty good because we had noticed that right at the very beginning where she said she exchanged it to explain how her goal to research in the ocean is a goal uh, that she regrets having made. We don't get any sense of that. And to establish the fact that the water conditions are an unpredictable characteristic of the ocean, <clears throat> she's just talking about putting her feet on the bottom. Okay, so the best answer that we have right here, and although all of them sound like they could be right, it's B, to compare the, her past experience in the ocean in northeast part of the country to her understanding of being in Hawaii. 
So the answer is B. Now, they'll do an analysis for you and um, they'll let you know that the student is being asked to determine why the author has included the given sentence in the passage. And option B is the correct answer because the author includes it in her contrast as she talks about her experience in the ocean with, uh, and her experience in the pool. So we get a yes and a yes on both sides of that answer. And the comparison serves to show the reader that her work as a marine biologist is challenging. And A isn't right because there's no evidence in the text to support the statement that the ocean waters are dangerous. And it's never spoken. C is incorrect because the author does not express regret about the career choice. And D is also correct, incorrect because there is no evidence in the text to support the statement. We haven't got to this about, you know, unpredictable water conditions. Now the questions begin to differ because this is going to add the second question that they're posing is which idea does the author convey by writing that the newborn whale calves are tailor-made for fundraising posters? Well, we know that newborns are beautiful and, and people are drawn to them. So is it the newborn whale calves are the focus of extensive research? Mm, that newborn whale calves have an emotional impact on people? Mm, that sounds pretty good because you look at them and you just fall in love. Like any little newborn, like a newborn puppy, for example. Newborn whale calves are interesting subjects for photographers or newborn whale calves uh, need more attention from environmental groups. Well, that one seems off base too because we're not talking about environmental groups. So what we do know is that when people look at newborns in general, even if I didn't read the passage, when people look at newborn puppies, newborn kittens, newborn anything, you are drawn to the fact that it's newborn. So that gives what we would have it be that newborn whale calves have an emotional impact on people. So the student is asked to determine which idea that the author's conveying by referring to newborn whale calves as tailor-made for fundraising posters. <laughs> Well, option B is correct because think, people do think baby whales are appealing and posters bearing images will help raise money. It also just draws your attention because it's a baby whale. And option A is incorrect because the phrase does not relate to the cost of conducting research. C is incorrect because the phrase does not relate to photography. And D is incorrect because the phrase does not relate to the need for more attention from environmental groups. So as you can see, there are reasons for why a question is wrong and why the only correct answer is right. So my advice um, on the various type of questions that you're going to see is that if you are looking at a passage, you should be able to find your answer somewhere in the passage. So always make sure that you go back to the passage if you're unsure about an answer. And you can always uh, draw back to different windows online because most of your tests, of course, are going to be serviced to you online. So you'll have to be on a computer or your iPad. A lot like what we do in cyber when we are trying to read and learn different things through our iPad. So just to give you uh, another heads up, we will talk about more questions and different types of questions uh, in next week's tutoring. Take care.